Hello everybody, my name is Party Midnight, and originally I was going to be uh, uploading a video starting Corpse Party, I guess, um, and well, this is replacing that, because instead of recording that, I decided to record something that I actually wanted to discuss and talk about, and well, right now, uh, the gameplay is going to be of, well, two different games uh, that I enjoy, Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2. Um, and obviously, as you can tell by the title of the video, this is uh, the difference, well, between Battlefield 1, Titanfall 2, and Call of Duty. Um, now I wanted to start off and say, Battlefield 1's campaign, I feel like it made an effort to be different just from the intro mission alone. Uh, the intro just telling you, hey, you're not expected to survive, you're probably gonna die. Uh, <laughs> you know, this is what happens, this is frontline combat, this is how it was in World War One. Now I'm not saying this is exactly how it was, but I can tell you that this probably is really accurate to it, just because you're picking up guns off the ground, you run out of ammo, you aren't finding any ammo right next to you, you know, and you literally just have a shit ton of soldiers coming at you. It's just hectic, you know. And Battlefield 1, uh, I played through not the entire campaign, I played through a bit of it, but the the thing is, is that you aren't Superman. Now I'm I'm playing it on hard because well that's the hardest difficulty I can get, but uh, it's it's pretty difficult, honestly. And I don't know if that's the difficulty itself, or if that's you know uh, the game being difficult. Uh, it's probably a combination of both, I don't know, but it it's it's tough. Like, you can't do anything by yourself. Granted, the first mission after the tutorial, the start, whatever you'll call it, um, is, you know, it tells you to go by yourself after the tank part. Um, you leave the tank and you gotta be basically by yourself, but you have a tank covering you, and then after that you gotta stealth completely by yourself. And it's a bitch. It's a bitch to do completely by yourself. And it makes a point in trying to tell you, hey, you aren't Superman, you can't take eight bullets, run away, heal, come back, kill 20 guys, you know, keep going. No, you've got to take it near seriously if you want to get through this campaign. And I love it. Uh, of course, Battlefield 1... You know, like I said, the intro, uh, the introduction, rather, um, it opens you up to the world that it's trying to portray, World War One, and it doesn't want to be like Call of Duty. It doesn't want you to think, oh yeah, let's just kill these guys. Let's kill these guys. You know, a tank. They even say uh, after your first death, first or second death, they talk about how. Uh, these killing machines were brought into the war like tanks and planes and shit, you know, they're killing machines. And granted, you know, that's that's what the soldier himself says about it. Um, and that, that itself speaks volumes. But it's very important to think about this stuff because in Call of Duty, you are the killing machine. You are. Now, I haven't played Infinite Warfare's campaign. Let me get that out of the way right now. Um, I haven't played Infinite Warfare's campaign, but if it's anything like any of the other Call of Duties, and I'm willing to bet that it is, it's you're just going to be a one-man wrecking team. Maybe you'll have a team of AIs with you, but you're going to be doing most of the slaughtering is how it is. And it's a shame that most Call of Duties are like that anyways. Um, granted, unless you play on veteran mode. But that's that's a different story. If you're playing on anything up to Hardened, you're pretty much just going to be a badass running through everything, killing everybody. 
Battlefield 1, it's different. You're going to die. You're, you're, you can't survive. I mean, you can survive, obviously, but it's, it's damn near difficult. I, in this video, in this gameplay here, you see me try to survive. I try my hardest, but I die anyways. Now, that's because the game wants to teach me a fucking lesson, but at the same time, it's, you know, the game's just saying, hey, yeah, you're gonna die anyways. You're just walking into your death. That's all that war is, you know, and at the very end of it, it tells you, um, the soldier speaking, it says e behind every gun sight is a human, you know, it wants to remind you that humans die in war, not Call of Duty where it's like, hey, yeah, they just died. Yep, you mowed down 30 people without thinking about it. Congratulations, here's your trophy. Now, I do still like Call of Duty. I still like some of the campaigns, not all of them, but you know, some of them are actually pretty good and some of them, they don't bring up this issue, but you don't think about this issue. Uh, Battlefield 1 actually brings up this issue and it seems to be the first Battlefield game to do so as Battlefield Bad Company, you know, pretty much wasn't too serious of a game. Um, I mean, it didn't need to be. Uh, then Battlefield 3, of course, how could you take it seriously when it's trying to take itself too seriously and then, oh shit, look in this briefcase, three nukes are gone, what do? <laughs> three fucking nukes. Uh, Battlefield 4, it never took the time to take itself seriously and Hardline was a fucking cop drama. Not saying I didn't like it, I'm just saying I like this new, um, I guess take on reality more um, and Battlefield 1 of course it tells you everybody who dies is a human they're important they had wives families they had people in their lives they they were someone to another person you know not just a person we control you know it's it's weird and that's why I like Battlefield 1. That's what makes it different than Call of Duty. And, of course, Battlefield 1 is already destroying Call of Duty. Um, I'm still going to pick up Call of Duty because I'm getting it for free. So, I mean, and Zombies in Spaceland. That's, that's what I'm excited for. But I'm just saying that Battlefield seems to take this kind of stuff more seriously. They want to send a message out to people, I guess. They want to set a good, not good example, but they want to, any kids who are playing this game, implying there are kids playing this game, yeah, there probably are, um, any kids who are playing this game, and if they play the campaign, they DICE wants to specifically show them the message that, hey, uh, war is not cracked up as to what it is you know it's not call of duty because in an era where literally call of duty has been played in overabundance it's nice to see some change um and it, it, i don't know it's it's something that i think we needed now i know spec ops the line did a lot of you know ptsd flashbacks and it made awareness of how crazy war can make a person or how war can change a person but not enough people played and enjoyed spec ops so i don't count it battlefield one is the first pretty much mainstream game that showed up anyways moving on to titanfall 2 i personally love titanfall so this is going to be really fucking biased uh the first titanfall i know a lot of people hated because it didn't have a campaign, so to say. I don't call it a campaign. I know people try to defend it and say it is a campaign, but I am... Man, I love Titanfall so much. If it was a dude and had a dick or something, I'd probably be sucking it, to be honest, because I just fucking love Titanfall. It's one of my favorite games, or one of my favorite shooters of this generation, um, of this console generation, I guess, or... Yeah... I guess that's how you'd phrase it. And, I mean, I know a lot of people are like, eh, it's just, y you add robots and, and AIs. And yes, but still, it's, it's more, 
Uh, to me, it's more than that. And um, one thing that they kept that felt like they wanted to show that I picked up on, excuse me, that I picked up on early when playing the original Titanfall was that they didn't want the mechs to be just machines for you to kill, you know? You didn't jump into your Titan and it didn't not say anything. It didn't welcome you. It What it would do is it would, you know, say Titan Online, blah, 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 welcome pilot, you know, basically breeding you into the Titan. And it's the point they always wanted to get across, it seemed, with Titanfall, and I loved it so much for this, was that it was... The Titan was not just a tank or something that you could use to kill people with. No, it was an extension of you. As I put it, it's the peanut butter to my jelly. It's the midnight to my party. It's it, it's all of these things. It's an extension to you. It's something that you can feel welcomed in. Granted, you don't go that far into it, but you know what I mean. You jump into it, and it's another form of you. It's not just something you ride in to get kills. No, it's it's you, and um, that's something. And it's not even you in Titanfall 2. They actually clarify that with the uh, campaign, which honestly is really cool. I'm I'm liking it so far, but in Titanfall 2, it's you and BT and. You know, you learn that this Titan has a fucking personality. He's not a killing machine. He is your friend. And granted, still Titanfall 2, to be honest, what I noticed early on that I, I mean, I liked. I didn't like it about the campaign, but I guess it helped tell the story of you and your Titan. Um, it's that, well you are supposed to be by yourself for the most part like yeah there are some times where you'll get you and some ai's companions but they won't be around for long you know it's always you and just your titan or just you yourself and it's supposed to tell you that well it's supposed to basically help with the whole yeah me and my titan you know we're best friends or whatever but yeah, that's it's a shame that Call of Duty doesn't seem to do this. Now, if Infinite Warfare comes out and I play the campaign through and it becomes this emotional journey saying, hey, yeah, um, instead of killing a bunch of people and, you know, let's go to space and kill people and screw it, go to space, whatever, whatever the thing is, um, you know, instead of just being... Yeah, we're just killing more people in space, you know? We have all these bodies wasted. We're not even going to recognize them or think about it. If if that's not the case with Call of Duty, I will be surprised, and I will make another video in response to this video and talk about how fucking great Infinity Ward is and how much they deserve praise. But you know what? That's probably not going to happen because... Call of Duty is always the same every year. Not always the same. I've always argued with this criticism, but I'm making it myself right now. The point is is that Call of Duty, for the most part, is the same as what it started. It started off as a shooter where you can literally just run around and murder thousands of people. I hate saying that because it makes me sound um, retarded. But it it doesn't recognize uh, the the cost of war, so to say, and I guess it doesn't really need to. But the fact that Battlefield One matured up and did that finally is awesome. I think it's something we don't get often in games, it seems. And I know games are meant as a form of escapism. Hell, I use it to escape everything, you know. Um, not everything, but a lot of things. Which is an issue, but still. Anyways, Battlefield 1, Titanfall 2, both great games. It's a shame that uh, Titanfall 2 came out like two weeks after Battlefield 1. 
because both are really great games. Two weeks or one week? I think it was one week, but whatever. Um, both are really great games, and I really think both, well, besides Battlefield, everybody's already playing that, but Titanfall 2, I really think people should give it a shot. Maybe in a few months when it actually, you know, uh, when people stop playing Battlefield 1 to play something else, or maybe Christmas time or something, um, we'll be seeing people play Titanfall 2, but... You know, for now, I guess I'll still be dominating the attrition leaderboards going 200. Hey. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And this is, this turned out to be a bit more serious, I guess, than I wanted it to. Um, but, yeah, if you want any more videos of me being fucking serious, I guess. Me taking shit seriously and me looking into games and shit. And be sure to let me know. Leave a like on this video if you want it. Leave a dislike if you don't, I, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you all have a wonderful day, night, whatever. Enjoy Infinite Warfare, Zombies, and Spaceland, whatever you're playing. Uh, be nice to one another. And take care of your fellow human, I guess. <laughs> Goodbye.